What's up, homies? Welcome to our first review. We've, we haven't actually done a review on this channel yet of Wonder Woman 1984. We'll for, for, forewarn you, there probably will be spoilers because the movie has now been out for a couple of weeks. Yeah. We had a fun time watching this movie with our patrons. That was a really good time. If you want to see the full reaction, you can go down to the links in the description, patreon.com slash heroes reforged. And uh, we have the full, it was a three hour live stream of us kind of talking <laughs> about the hype up of the movie, then spending the two and a half hours watching it. And uh, it was a good time. I had a really fun time doing that. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of Patreon, we are going to be doing a Q&A this Saturday, the 16th at 10 a.m. Pacific. Uh, I guess that would be 1 p.m. Eastern time. If you are part of our Patreon, whether it's the hero or the sidekick tier, you will have access to that live stream. And as a bonus, you can now go into the Patreon post or our Discord under Ask Us Anything and submit questions. So if you've been dying for us to talk about Deadpool 3 being rated R in the MCU... Now's the perfect opportunity to ask those questions. Yup. That's right. That's right. It'll be like the old school. It'll be like the old school shows. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I remember those. Also, (laughs) the other thing we got to mention is uh, this is a review for Wonder Woman 1984. Mm -hmm. We have had such a great time watching and reacting to The Mandalorian. In case you Mm. missed the news, we're doing WandaVision. So that is also... Maybe on the channel right now. Uh, check. <laughs> but it, it, if, if it's you're watching, midnight and Friday, we're yeah, recording. We're recording. Yeah. That's right. Midnight Thursday night. Thursday uh, night. Sorry. First, yeah. first two episodes of WandaVision are going to be out. And then, as always, you can see our full uncut, uncircumcised reactions on <laughs> the Patreon. What? Is it messed up that you and I were thinking about the same thing <laughs> at the same time? <laughs> same page, you me sick, and you. Sick sickos. Me and you. Same page, baby. Sickos. Same page. I Both love it. Sickos. I love oh. it. Also, Ooh. you have to check out, if you have not, check out the uh, the Vision comic book review that Hector and I did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, we did a super deep dive on what we think could be a uh, part of WandaVision. Uh, so check that out. Uh, we got a lot of good stuff for you guys. We're super excited for what's coming next. Yeah. yeah let's absolutely. get into this. Let's get into boy. it. Well, uh, yeah. Adam was talking about how there's going to be spoilers. I would love to just real quick get everybody's overall thoughts, non-spoiler, non-spoiler, sure. in case somebody's non-spoiler, watching okay. and they haven't seen it yet, to just get our takes, mm-hmm. non-spoiler. Mm-hmm. Uh, Adam, why don't you go first? Give us your overall thoughts. I watched it two times because I wanted to be sure that I felt the way that I did about the movie. Same, same. When I watched it the first time, I was a bit uneven about the movie. There were things that I liked. There were a lot of things that I didn't like about it. And I think overall... It was really hard for me to get behind what the movie was trying to do. That being said, when I watched it the second time and it was just me in a room and I could really just focus on the movie, I felt like the stuff that I wasn't so crazy about, I didn't necessarily love it the second time, but I warmed up to it a little bit more. There are still little things about the movie that I think, and I'm not the director, I'm not the writer, it's not my choice, but if 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 I if it was like pie in the sky and I was that person, there are little things that I would tweak here and there that I think for me personally would have made it that much of a better film. But uh, I did end up walking out of it the second time being like, you know what? I don't love this movie. I mm-hmm. still do think that the first one is much better. Um, but I, I enjoyed this film. Didn't love it, but I definitely enjoyed it. I think I'm in a, pretty much, again, same page, right, Adam? Uh, <laughs> I, think I, I, I think I think that the movie is okay. It's mm-hmm. not uh, my least favorite in the DC Extended Universe. It's not my favorite. It's my favorite still. I loved Birds of Prey. I have a connection to Shazam. I have a connection to that first Wonder Woman movie for sure. I even love how over-the-top Aquaman is. Aquaman, it's like it's like a Fast and Furious movie to me, and yeah. I love that. It's pure popcorn. Yeah. But Wonder Woman 1984, uh. overall, I think I was bummed that I didn't have as much of a connection to some of the stuff they were trying to establish the audience to get a connection to. Some of those decisions we could talk about on the spoiler stuff. I still think the cast is overall great, and I think for me it comes down to, as much as I love Pedro, as much as I love Pedro Pascal... I think I would have preferred a version of this movie that had less of him or none and more mm. Cheetah. I agree. I felt like I really wanted more Kristen Wiig, Cheetah, and more of that relationship. And I think that the movie got a little bit too concerned with the Pedro Pascal of it all, the Maxwell Lord of it all. Uh, but we can get more into the specifics. So overall, not my favorite. Pretty bummed that I didn't love it. 
yeah. love certain things about it. I still think that the cast is great, and I still am looking forward to like continuing to forge through. And I'm like, let's go Wonder Woman three, let's go modern. You know, I, I'm already thinking of ideas as stuff I'd love to see as a fan and different characters, and you know, so I'm I'm still in yeah. on it. But this was one that it it, it did kind of miss the mark for me. Augustine overall, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the the movie for me was very messy. Um, it it just seemed like there was. Too many cooks in the kitchen at this. I I would be very disappointed if I came off of Wonder Woman 1 uh, it, it doing a marathon, basically. Watching Wonder Woman 1 and then jumping into this movie immediately. I'd be like, guys, this is this is tonally completely different. Yeah. Uh, that being said, I didn't hate this movie. Uh, even though it is a mess, it's... I guess I could just compare it to the Fast and Furious type movies. It's just like, turn your brain off. And just enjoy this movie, which sucks, which I don't want to say about a Wonder Woman movie. Right. Because the first one had so many hard-hitting messages, so many good, th- so many un- unexpected things, uh, the legendary, iconic scenes that were instant classics. Um, but it, it just didn't fit tonally after the first one. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I still feel like you can have fun with this movie. I still feel like there are moments that kind of try to echo that, that try to give us that you know, Wonder Woman doing things that we haven't seen her do before and really trying to bond, tr- trying to get those friendships to for us to care about those friendships and relationships that Wonder Woman is is trying to create. Um, but overall, messy, 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 <laughs> messy, messy. As, as messy, you were, yeah, as you were talking, it. Augustine, you reminded me of No Man's Land from the right, first film, right? which I think yeah. we all are in agreement the best part our favorite part of the first wonder woman film Mm -hmm. it's like emotional i cried the first time i'm in the theaters and it was happening it's just like this awesome awesome moment and with in 1984 it's like i don't think there's a sequence like that unfortunately there there isn't there they they missed out on that kind of thing and that's why i said you can't come off of watching wonder woman 2 i'm sorry wonder woman 1 jump into this movie and get that same feeling which i think which is why i can't say that i love this movie yeah, mm-hmm. and, and that, which is why I said you you have to turn your brain off for this one because it's not that. And and it's a shame that 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 is what this sort of you know a lot of people are talking about like if we can get into spoilers a lot of people are talking about the tone and the sort of premise of the movie the magic wish and it being it hearkening back to like older eras of superhero or fantasy action movies and right. you know it's kind of doing some of the cheesiness of like Batman Returns or the Superman Richard Donner movies in a in in a kind of a new way. And I think it's a a bummer that out of all of the movies in this franchise, the DC film franchise that's happening now, that Wonder Woman is the one that's sort of like, okay, it's kind of, don't think too hard about it. There's yeah, a magical right. rock. Don't think about the logistics. Just kind of go with it. Because it's like, I don't want Wonder Woman to be the movie that ends up doing that. If this was Birds of Prey, if this was a Harley Quinn movie, if this was Aquaman or Shazam, which is, Shazam is like the most magic. Yeah. And Wonder Woman is, <laughs> The closest right? one. Yeah, mm-hmm. and Wonder Woman is like this myth- mythological, you know, sort of like it's similar to some Thor, some Lord of the Rings maybe. Yeah. You know, it's just kind of like like mythology and like Troy and like that kind of world. It's the bummer that this is the one that we go, okay, let, let's turn our brain off a little mm-hmm. or let's cut it some slack because this is the one that yeah. I want to be airtight. Mm-hmm. This is the this is yeah. the one movie in the DC franchise that I want people to be able to pull the messages from and to analyze and be like, oh, it's so smart. It's so yeah. well put together and I totally get what they're saying. And just uh, just to fire on all cylinders and the fact that this is the one where it's like, eh, don't think about the, 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 the Chris Pine body thing. It's right. like, well... <laughs> Well, exactly. I think, you know, we, we bring up we bring up um, No Man's Land a lot, and I think, like, it's not even just No Man's Land. It's even the liberation of Veld. Yes. And it's it's them having, it's, it's Diana and Steve having the moments together in mm-hmm. that nighttime scene where they're dancing together. Mm-hmm. It just has so much emotion all around of, like, empowerment, of strength, of love. And I think it hits all three of those things so incredibly well throughout this, like, I don't know, 15, 20 minute sequence in the movie. Like that part of the movie, that's the heart of the movie. Agreed. That is like the yeah. life, that's like the beating pulse of that movie. And I agree with you guys that I never felt like there was anything in this movie that hap- that made me feel like that. I feel like the things that they were trying to do with Steve 
and Diana where they steal the jet, it goes invisible, you know, and then they're flying through the fireworks. I feel like that was trying to maybe yes. sell me you're, on you're that right. emotion. You're right. But I, I, I never fully yeah. was in. I think that maybe yeah. if I'm thinking about it now, that, that maybe the sequence they meant to have that sort of emotional gut punch was when Diana renounces her wish, runs mm-hmm. away, flies into the air, and by thinking of Steve, now she can fly. Right. And it's like, like we were saying as we were watching the movie, I think we were all looking at it and being like, okay, we I, we think we know what this scene sequence is trying to do. Mm-hmm. And on paper, it's kind of lovely that Wonder Woman sort of discovers she can fly because she thinks about Steve in the same way that, you know, Robin Williams can fly because he thinks about his kids yeah. in, P- in in Hook. You know, that it's- I'm it's a daddy. It's beautiful. But again, up to that point, the, the the actual logistics of the movie, it's this weird like, okay, so Chris <laughs> Pine is just around the corner on this pillar and he's just going to you know kiss you and you're going to run away. And then before you do that, you're going to say, I'll never love again. And we're all kind of rolling our eyes a little bit because we're like- can, a you, little be, cheesy. can mm-hmm. you be a little stronger? You're Wonder yeah. Woman. You know, right. I, I, I get that we want the romance in these superhero films and there's a double standard for female superhero characters. I mm-hmm. get it 100%. But it is unfortunate because there are so few that this is the one that has so much pressure on it. And like, you know, it's the first yeah. female solo sequel Right. superhero movie mm-hmm. we got. So then she's crying. She runs around the corner and you're and we're just thinking like, did that guy... Like come back? Like, what did he happened? Disintegrate? Did he disappear? Yeah. Is did he like my body? He snapped like, out of it. And he was like, "Why am I in the middle of DC? What's happening?" The, the right. whole time exactly. she's flying. That's what we're thinking about because yeah. of these right. logistics. Because right. sometimes the magic rock just creates a nuclear missile, but mm. other times it needed a body to put a soul in. Right. So you're like, why didn't it just create Chris Pine? Right. Yeah, that's why, why did, the only the only words that I could think of in my head to criticize this movie is just it's messy. The yeah. rules aren't necessarily clear enough. Tight. They're not tight. They contradict themselves on several occasions. Mm-hmm. And I, I feel like it was just too... I, I, I think I called it in our, in our reaction after we saw the movie Spider-Man 3 kind of syndrome, where it was just too many things kind yeah. of just like stacking up on and themselves. The, too then, many villains. Then the two too villains many, team up. Yeah. yeah. Which and is then like, using a con- the convenience of the magic rock, it's just right. too much. It's and I think that's 3. the big yeah. bummer because I think anytime a superhero movie uses two villains, automatically... The, the narrative around those types of movies is like, too many villains, it'll never work. But I think right. there have been films yeah. that have done it successfully. I think yeah. like The Dark Knight is a perfect example. Even though Harvey Dent was not the villain for the entirety of the movie, when that turn happens, they do a yeah. really good job switching back and forth. Like the narrative is working its way through Joker's motivations, Harvey's motivations, mm-hmm. Bruce's motivations. And it's telling a very coherent story. Whereas with this, it does feel like that like one of these characters got the got the short end of the stick and was not yeah. featured as much. And yeah. it sucks because yeah, we all love uh, we we all love Pedro Pascal. We all yeah. love Kristen Wiig, and I would have preferred. I mean, based alone, just having seen the movie and seeing their stories, the cheetah storyline. Like, I understand <laughs> why it works for this yeah. movie and why they put mm-hmm. it in there, yeah. but I don't feel like it does that character any justice necessarily. No. No. Is there to just yeah. kind of fulfill the storyline and not necessarily the character? As well yeah. as her relationship with Diana, I, yeah. I didn't, I didn't buy that Diana cared about her. I bought that Kristen Wiig's character looked up to Diana. Yeah, that's right. easy peasy. I buy My that. My favorite 100%. scene, I think, was them having drinks. It was great, and yeah. I like that to me that was scene. like this is the little nugget that's yeah. selling me on this friendship, and I wanted more of that. But you know, I, I, I feel like Diana like went into this weird phase in this movie where she was. A little bit of an asshole. <laughs> I know. And, I and was again, like, oh, there's this listen. Is, oh, weird. There's a double Don't standard. Know if I like this. But I maybe I shouldn't have done this because maybe it is kind of making me a little biased. But I watched mm-hmm. the um, Screen Junkies Honest trailer for Wonder mm-hmm. Woman 1984, which I think came out today. And one of the things they point out, which I didn't even realize, is that. Diana, at one point, she does that annoying thing that annoying people do where, th- where people who don't own TVs have to tell you they don't own a TV. And I was right. like, you know what? That does piss me off. And Diana says it in the movie. And I'm like, uh-huh. don't be And don't then be she goes person. into her command center with like and 12 TVs. And you're like, TVs. <laughs> so she's like, I don't own a television. And I'm just like, okay, sorry. So you're so I don't cool. buy like, Blu-rays. <laughs> so, you know, we were saying this as we were watching the film, and I think we've had this conversation before, but Wonder Woman 1 makes such a great fish-out-of-water character mm-hmm. and a, a, a goddess, a god who we root for because it's like 
she doesn't know everything and she has such a pure heart and we just we want the best for her like she's yeah. such a great character full of heart and with this one when she's boss when she's head of the smithsonian and she's you know refusing to connect with humanity she just seems kind of distant and cold mm-hmm. and i wanted her more of the movie to show us her warming up to at least barbara yes. right so that that mm-hmm. friendship can really sever and the other thing i was thinking about too is that Second time I watched it, I was I was like, oh yeah, the the rock or whatever has that mythological origin where Diana recognizes what the inscription is, like from which evil god made it. And I was thinking, why isn't that the villain of the movie? Yes, why is exactly. this? It, it would be as if the Avengers movie was about Loki's scepter and Loki died a thousand years. You know, it was just like, mm-hmm. well, why wouldn't that be like the main threat? Instead, we have to give it to the Pedro Pascal character. And then have Barbara come in to try to get some attention. And then she's got the thing with Steve. And if you don't spend enough time with each of those things, they'll all sort of suffer. Mm-hmm. And the Maxwell Lord character, I think it got, I think it got away from them. I think about yeah, absolutely. the movie being set in the 80s. And I go, why in the 80s, why not today? If it were today, Wonder Woman could be out and about. Instead of being the secretive, you know, shh, little girl, don't tell anybody that I'm Which Wonder I Woman. also like... I didn't <sighs> not a fan. I just I, I I hate like wait 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 Adam what what's up? No, I, <laughs> I'm just gonna say I'm like I I'm just so bummed. Yeah, to be completely honest, because like I love that first Wonder Woman movie so damn much, and the the concept and the idea of like Wonder Woman was hidden. She like stayed in hiding for eighty years, but then when you hear Patty Jenkins and Gal Gadot talking about the character, like well we're kind of retconning that thing and we're mm-hmm. not really following through with it. Mm-hmm. But then to be in the movie going around being like, don't say anything. Right. It'd be one Her thing. knocking if, out cameras. Yeah, it'd be one thing yeah. if she was like zooming around like the Flash. Then you could totally get away with it. But she's being very present in some of these scenes, <laughs> especially towards yeah. the beginning. Yeah. You know, I, I, you could you could kind of make an argument for the rest of the movie because she's not necessarily in any heavily populated areas, except for the fact where she runs down. I don't know if that's Pennsylvania. I, I've never been to DC, but yeah. you yeah. know, she starts riding the lightning, and I'm like, well, people are gonna notice. <laughs> and she also yeah. used her lasso to affect everybody on Earth through the mm. TV magic of and like. Maxwell does that Lord affect people's memories? End? I don't know. There's just, it's like Augustine said earlier, there's just so many like messy sort of things that the movie doesn't bother to explain and then you're just left thinking about it. And Mm -hmm. I think that it being in the 80s, I feel like they were going with, well, we got to make this a Trump analogy, which I completely understand that that's what they wanted to say about the world we live in today. Mm -hmm. And But then I think it's interesting that if you're doing Trump, they had a Chilean actor play him because I'm yeah. like already that's kind of at odds, dude. Like if you <laughs> if you want to do Trump, like have him be full on evil. Instead, right. they give him a sympathetic immigrant story, right. and I'm like, right. so is this about the access the the excess of the '80s and how like liars will con, are con men and they'll tell you you can have everything. You know, life is good, but it can be better. That's a mm-hmm. very great metaphor for what's been happening. It's like in, a Wall Street huckster. More yeah, than I mean, like yeah, it's Michael Douglas, a corrupt politician. It's, but know. then they give him the immigrant story and the child, and I'm like, so he's sympathetic. So, so I'm like, it's just, I, why not full blown evil? Why not let him be fully evil to really drive home that uh, that message that you're trying to do? And I think with all of the wishing and all the logistics and involving the White House, and then they go to Egypt, and there's all this weird stuff with how they too many depict, things, too many things. It's I was too like, many things. I think you could have done this and have the villain be the actual origin of the wishing rock guy, then maybe Barbara or maybe just Barbara and have it be just Diana and Barbara. And then you bring in Steve and there's a version of the movie that I think could have worked if it was trimmed down. Yeah. Love, the Linda, part- love the Linda Carter cameo. Yeah. Absolutely. Me too. My favorite part. Mm-hmm. Loved Me it. Me too. I do also wonder if uh, the, the reason why they kind of kept away from doing this, like this mischievous God is because we had Aries in the last movie and we kind of had something like this in suicide squad. And I don't know if they were nece- if they were like, oh, let's let's move away from that. Let's not dip into that territory. Sure, We've kind of already know. touched into that a little bit. But re- regardless, I mean, I'm I'm still excited to see Wonder Woman three, no matter what. Absolutely. And I, and I do still want to see like what Patty Jenkins has to say about this character in modern day. I think that to me is going to be very interesting. Uh, I did watch this on HBO Max, obviously. Uh, I was really not impressed with the streaming quality of this movie. <laughs> and I, that's like, that has nothing to do with the quality of the movie itself yeah, as right, a film. Right. But as a presentation, I'm kind of like, this was not that good. They, 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 I mean, they tried to do a really good job. They tried to do a good job of the marketing. Like yeah. the, the lead up, they have uh, in HBO Plus, they have a whole Gal Gadot section and, mm-hmm. you know, things she recommends and things like that. But overall, uh, COVID really kind of messed the presentation yeah. of it up. 
Yeah. Uh, but also, it the movie had been delayed several times beforehand. Yeah, like, it was supposed was, to come out, I think, in December of last year originally, yeah. and mm-hmm. then they kept moving mm-hmm. it. There also, was I thought plenty it was, of time to look at like what yeah. might go wrong, but it's also really weird. We like live in this weird era right now, and it's uh, obviously a lot of it's because of coronavirus. You know, we're existing in this era where we're all at home, we're all watching television, we're all mm-hmm. mostly watching the same shit. Mm-hmm, we mm-hmm. watched, like the whole world who has access to it, watched The Mandalorian for the last two months. <sighs> and it was really weird to me going from The Mandalorian, a show that I personally think is done with such incredible execution and uh, quality, and then going to Wonder Woman 84, and I'm like, man, it's wild to me that like an eight episode, 30 minute series has. I'm I'm sure less money than Wonder Woman, but yeah. in some parts I'm like, man, this shit looks better, <laughs> and I'm confused by it. Yeah, I'm yeah, really yeah. confused. I'm like, Wonder Woman should yeah. be like the cream of it should be like the top tier, you know, best yeah. looking Listen, thing out there. It should be untouchable. Yeah, I don't know if it's a Warner Brothers thing, if it's like this particular franchise or what, but yeah. the the DC Extended Universe has been real hit and miss with me for like special effects. Mm-hmm. Some of it looks dope. Some of it looks really clean, really realistic. Other of it looks really green screeny, blue screeny, CG e. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. And some stuff looks fakey, kind of almost on purpose. Again, I go to Aquaman, but yeah. I'm so into it, and it's so colorful, and it, you know, it's a I'm style. Like, yeah, it's a style, and I mm-hmm. and I dig it. And and the style of this one and the tone, it's again, it's weird because it's like this one was for kids. It felt like it could be appropriate for children, but it also still felt like. But you should have some background knowledge of like the movies Batman v Superman, mm-hmm. the first Wonder Woman movie. And I'm like, okay, well, those aren't necessarily for little kids, little boys and yeah. girls. Yeah, like, yeah. what you know? There's just this weird. And then so the, the the fact that things are so much more colorful in this, I know a lot of uh, fans of the more muted color tone of the previous DC movies will point out the fact that those costumes were designed for that muted color tone, but then you have Wonder Woman in this with the bright red, the bright blue, and it's like, does it not look as good because these costumes are designed for it? Then if that's the case, then I'm like, then should we redesign the costume? Like, you know, it, it, it's just like, we, I want this stuff to look as good as possible. Mm-hmm. And that, and we haven't even described Cheetah, which is like... Did not look great. Uh, Kristen Wig and yeah. the makeup yeah. and the hair and the in the in the shoes and the clothing, awesome. Up to when she goes full on cats, and then it's like not great. A couple of shots where it looked good, but you know it was a it yeah. was a little. I, I, I wasn't too bothered by the by the look. I think there's some moments where it just doesn't look like Kristen Wig, which right. I think that kind of removed me a bit. And I think it has a lot to do with like the nose area because it is a cat. Yeah. yeah. Um, but over, overall, I was like I was mostly okay with it. I, I'm like. I've con- I think I've gone to the point now, and this is hard for us, especially because we're vi- we're former visual effects artists. So we have a tendency to really pay attention to that kind of stuff. Absolutely, I, I can't not because people ask me all the time. They're like, "Why are you so like picky about the visual effects?" It's like because I worked in that industry for almost <laughs> seven years of my life. Yeah, yeah. And we yeah. like we we like dissected the fibers of those movies to make sure yeah. those visual effects looked really good. So it's really tough for me to look at something and to just be able to really clearly identify it for what it is. And that's not the case with all of their movies. Like I agree. I think Aquaman is just like it's such a comic book. So when yeah. you see Jason Momoa riding a digital seahorse, I'm like, this is exactly what this movie should be. Yes, exactly. And I'm in. Exactly. Yeah. Whereas with this stuff, yeah. even just like flying, I'm like, even the flying shots, I'm like, this seems kind of basic. Mm-hmm. They were yeah. like, okay. Like yeah. I think I think, you know, Man of Steel and all the other movies that have had Superman flying have done it way better. And I think even in the last movie where she does like really crazy epic jumps and stuff, it was yeah. The, the quality just yeah. felt cleaner to me. It's tough. It's tough. That, yeah. I would say, is a nitpick. That's yeah. not necessarily about the story and the development of the characters and stuff. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Visually, this movie uh, was lacking, for sure. Yeah. Um, what did you guys feel about the music? Is there anything musically that stood out to you guys? Did they it, treat the iconic theme okay for me so, nothing stuck out as far uh, so as i know that hans zimmer created that theme for wonder woman when he yeah. did batman versus superman which yeah. i personally really like i know there's like mixed re- reactions to it the the score for the first movie um Love remind it. me of the composer i think it's harry gregson williams harry, harry gregson williams i think yeah um Let me double it's check. an it's an amazing score like i love the score for the first okay. wonder Woman movie i think it's super strong with this one, I never really like. I never felt I was in a Wonder Woman movie. It felt Rupert Gregson Williams, but Rupert yeah. Gregson Williams. It felt 
a little generic at times. Like it definitely has moments that I think are really, really strong and really good. But I felt like the first movie, the music really kept me in. And then there's two moments where they use music, one from Sunshine, Danny Boyle's Sunshine. Hmm. And the second piece of music is Beautiful Lie from Batman versus Superman, which I'm like, took me out. Yeah. Why would you use these? Why would you use that piece of music for an iconic moment where Diana learns to fly? And no, why it was it was used for oh for the sunshine yeah for the going. sunshine theme yeah, yeah 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 and then why would you use a theme from Batman versus Superman for when she's trying to convince the world to renounce their wishes yeah it, was, it like it was it was weird I didn't under like I don't know for me it was just strange to use music from a movie that chronologically hasn't happened hasn't yet. happened yet so it's like yeah that. I don't know. It was, it was just a really weird choice for me. I don't know why they did it, but I'm sure there's a reason written somewhere. I, but I, I saw a. It. I, I'm addicted to TikTok at this point. I saw somebody on TikTok who was a music producer mm-hmm. uh, say that sometimes this happens with temp music scores. Uh, I don't remember the full explanation, but it's very possible that they left it. That there might have been some kind of time crunch. Something happened in the long mm-hmm. run. They were using this music as a temporary music score. And, just you know, end of the in. day, they were just like, yeah, this works. Just leave it there. Yeah. We don't have yeah. enough time or budget to yeah. do this. So it's very possible that that happened. But <sighs> yeah, they could, have, they, they could have left it in there and then they could have told Hans Zimmer, OK, so, you know, Beautiful Lie, that thing you already did. Can you just do something like that for this final yeah. sequence? And either he <laughs> yeah. or somebody was like, or we could just not pay him to do even more. Mu- like, just that's it. Just just leave it in there. Yeah, that's that's a potential, too. But I think, that I think the, the point is, is that this franchise across different movies in this franchise, Batman versus Superman, Aquaman, Wonder Woman, there's no real score continuity or like thematic sort of like, you know, thing holding it together. It feels like the MCU has some of that stuff. I think it does with like the Alan Silvestri Avengers movies and some of the themes of some of the characters. If they kind of come up, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't think that this sort of more dis- disparate franchise kind of has that yet. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I, that, I was about to, I was going to mention the beautiful lie moment as well. It just kind of really took me out. And, and just sort of the whole sort of resolution of the, of the third act and of the threat was something that I was like, okay, I guess we're doing it this way. It's, it, it, it's not what I would have done or thought of. But again, it just goes back to, I think I would have liked a different depiction of Maxwell Lord or, you know, not even have him be in the movie and have it just be Barbara and have some really crushing music as Barbara is fighting because she really did lose her humanity. And mm. I don't know. Uh, at the end of the day, for me, the movie was a uh, swing and a miss. Uh, there was some interesting, ambitious stuff in there. I don't know, you know, the, the decisions being made. I don't know why they were made that way. If it was like, no, this is definitely the story they wanted to tell. Or if things were changed, if things were like adjusted, whatever the case may be. I love the first Wonder Woman movie. Could not connect to this one. Um, but I'm excited for Wonder Woman 3. That's it. For me, it was a swing and a mess. <laughs> I miss. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, <laughs> I, uh, I, I had fun with this movie. Um, I'm definitely still looking forward to things in the future for Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was not the strongest entry into the DC lineup, but I'm still willing to give this whole DC thing a shot because i feel like the all the potentiality is there it's so close to being great but it's not there yet and i want it to be um yeah so on to the next one yeah i i think for me i think definitely i enjoyed it more the second time i'm still yeah it's definitely not a movie that i I love not definitely not as much as the first one i absolutely adore that movie Mm -hmm. it's still i think it might still be my number one dc film wonder woman Mm -hmm. 2017 one yeah uh yeah yeah i think so um, but there were definitely moments that I enjoyed. The banter with Gal Gadot and Chris Pine is always like it's the always most good. enjoyable thing. Yeah, they play so well off of each other. So I, I am the, the the fact that this I'm assuming is the final final resolution of yeah. the storyline with Steve Trevor is a bit of a bummer. Just because I love Chris Pine so much, um, but I but I'm looking forward to seeing what Diana does in the present, moving forward, getting on with her life, and. This is kind of like an aside, but I'm also curious to see if Wonder Woman 3 will play off of the theatrical release of Justice League and where that ends off, or if it will play into the director's cut of Justice League, or if it's not really even going to be concerned with any of those right. like, threads. Like if it won't matter. I think the answers uh, to that are going to be, we have to see the, 
the director's cut, the Zack Snyder's Justice League, when that mm-hmm. comes out, if it's vastly, if it ends and it's super different, if it ends and it's like Batman died or some, you know, something where it's like super, super different to the mm-hmm. universe, then, then I think those questions will be, will need to be addressed. Yeah. But until then, I would imagine that the theatrical released movie of Justice League is what is what they're considering to be like that's what happened that's the canon because mm-hmm. that's what Aquaman referenced for a line and that you know and 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 going forward we'll see there but mm-hmm. yeah i don't know yeah, yeah and i mean over, oh, overall yeah. you know I, there there have been there have also been marvel movies that i've seen that i'm like oh you know this one wasn't for me but i'm sure. still looking yeah. forward to the next one and that's much. how i feel about these dc movies every time i see them i'm like you know Suicide Squad didn't work for me. BBS didn't work for me. You know, this one didn't work for me that much either. Justice League definitely didn't work for me. But the ones that I have seen that I've loved, Birds of Prey, Aquaman, Shazam, you know, uh, I I look forward to seeing these movies every single time they come out because I'm always interested in seeing... How are we pushing this universe forward? Bring what's on the next story? New gods, bring it on! <laughs> I know, like let's keep moving forward. Let's yeah, still yeah. keep building out. Yeah. I never want them to feel discouraged to constantly be like, "Well, we gotta, we gotta reinvent the wheel, reinvent the wheel." It's like just keep moving forward. You will I find agree. your stride. But it also takes a studio to actually have the faith in that. IP mm-hmm. and that franchise and those characters to be like, just keep going, just keep yeah. going. Mm-hmm. The second you lose that faith, I feel like mm, you're, in, you're entering That's reboot when it territory. To waver. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. We will see, yeah. guys. Let us know your comments down below. What did you think of Wonder Woman 1984? I feel like there are so many conversations happening about this movie, around this movie, what people th- feel like they could have done, should have done, what they would do. I'm mostly like really interested to hear what people think because I think everyone has such different opinions about the movie and everyone has experienced it and enjoyed it in so many different levels. So it's been very interesting to watch and see what people think. But yeah. if you want to check out our uncut reaction, that's available on Patreon. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. If you've sat through this video and you haven't liked or subscribed and you actually enjoyed the content, <laughs> I don't know, consider subscribing if that's a thing Give that you're into. Sub. It helps us out. Yeah. It helps us out if you Click en- that bell. enjoying it. Give us a sub. Uh, if check you out all don't the other stuff. Subscribe. <laughs> if you don't subscribe, I will never hunt. love again. <laughs> He's gonna hunt you down. <laughs> we can't lose Hector like this, guys. Please subscribe. Please. <laughs> uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. Check out all the other videos we're doing on the channel. Consider joining our Patreon, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.